One thing that I really love about working in a renewable focused electricity sector mm. is that the people that I get to work with are all very purpose driven and getting to work with different associations, different industries that are all focused on Ireland's renewable energy goals means that when you're talking to people about their various solutions, they're not trying to hammer home that their solution needs to come on, out on top and over others. They are trying to look at the objective and what's the most suitable set of solutions to actually economically meet the objectives. So I suppose that means that in trying to get to the bottom of what's important about the integration of renewables onto the system, a key question is, why do you do what you do? So... Yeah, no. it's a good, it's a great question, Paddy. Um, it's one that I'm often asked, like, do I wake up in the morning and think I can't wait to build wind turbines today? And the answer is not, not really. You know, that's not what's really driving me. What's really driving me is, is the a future that's uh, green and clean and safe for my kids to grow up in. As cheesy as that does sound, it does really drive your purpose. I, I think all of us have. Uh, the three of us here around the table, we've young families, um, and I think that makes you look at life and through a different lens. And certainly it was one of the main reasons that I transitioned into my current role. I looked at the ability of Ireland to contribute to decreasing emissions, becoming more renewable, and what's Ireland's best mechanism of doing so. And it's, it, in my opinion, at the time it was certainly wind energy, and that is still my opinion. So uh, every day I try and get up and do my best to try and deliver clean energy in the cheapest way possible for the consumer so that we can get ourselves off fossil fuels as quickly as possible and reduce our carbon emissions. And that's what drives me. And I kind of from my side, it's probably something very similar. I, I, there's no kind of route towards decarbonizing uh, our economy and our world that doesn't go via the, the mass deployment of renewable electricity. Mm. Um, you just have to look at the IPCC and everything else. And climate change was something that motivated me um, kind of long throughout my career. I started my career in renewables. When, when I left college, you know, there was something I really wanted to do is, you know, join the battle to save the world and fight climate change. And the option was at the time was renewable electricity. And it still is the kind of the leading option, the best tool we have today currently. And personally, Noel mentioned being a father. Mm. I, I definitely, I think of it like tr time travel. The, the effects of climate change can feel very um, intellectual almost sometimes, very abstract. But when you look at your little fella wrecking the house um, and you start thinking about what he's going to have to do in 20 years, if he's going to buy a house, can he buy a house near the coast? Where is he going to go to school? Um, you know, what, what are the, what's the weather going to be like? Will he know what a summer is? Will he know what a winter is? Um, and it makes it very directly personal. And when you're doing the kind of work that myself and Noel do, there's a lot of, it's political advocacy in a lot of cases, a lot of regulatory barriers. You're fighting the state to try and get it to move a bit faster than it wants to move to deliver on the climate targets. And you get a, you get a lot of pushback, you get um, a lot of resistance and institutional inertia. And I find that it's very helpful to keep that personal motivation at those times. Yeah, I think a common trait is in the industry is that people have a real internal drive to leave the world in in a little bit better way than the mm. founders. And then the search is to how do you best use your skill set in order to make that happen? And uh, when you look at the electricity sector in, in particular, I suppose going right back to 1929 with Ardna Krusha, it was a large scale renewable energy source. Yeah. Was the, it, was, the, it was a quarter of the state's budget at the quarter, time. Yeah. You know, so it was like this kind of decision that we are going to modernize this country, we're going to electrify, we're going to be, do it from our own natural resources and be an independent uh, on, you know, in terms of generation of our electricity mix. Um, and it was building on, there was all these little uh, generators all around the country that were kind of, you know, largely fossil fired. But this was the kind of real opportunity to take a quantum leap forward as a modern nation. And that's as true today as it was then.